Today I'm going to be working in my new tag-shaped art journal that I showed you in the previous video. And um, I've been getting asked some questions about these two pages and how I did them and if I filmed them. And I did not film them, but I had already planned on doing um, a double page spread that's similar to this, using a lot of the same techniques, but, but different, of course. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to be doing kind of like a brick and window type thing, I guess. So I've already pre-die cut <clears throat> two windows from the Tim Holtz window die. And they have window seals that come where window or flower boxes or whatever. And then I think it's called pediment die. I already cut two of those out. Or die cut two of them. These are old book pages that I had uh, glued together. Um... I didn't want to make it too thick in here, so I plan on using those, and I'm going to use some stencils. I'm going to use this brick stencil, and I'm going to use this, um, what's it called, Flourish, yeah, Flourish maybe, or Damask, not a Flourish, a Damask stencil from Prima. I'm going to use a script stamp, and I don't know where this came from, who, who made it. Um, I don't have the packaging anymore, but I'm going to use a script stamp. Um, and some more stuff, but that's what we're going to get started with. So, the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to place the windows where I want them on the page, and then I'm going to trace them out um, so that when I go to use the modeling paste I don't have to um, I don't worry about getting it in that spot let me find my pencil yeah there go. There it is. okay so I'm just going to place them around about where I want them and then I'm going to trace I'm not going to trace these because they're going to be up on pop dots Trace the inside the, s the squares too. All right, and I'm not going to trace these either. Um, I think I'm going to have them raised up just a little bit too. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So the reason I did that is so when I go in with my stencils and I'm putting the paste on, I don't get it on that because it'll be harder for it to to glue down right there. Okay, the next step is I'm going to use my script stamp and I'm going to use the Versafine ink again. This, this ink is really good when you've got really intricate um, stamps like this one. So just like last video, I'm just going to ink it up and roll it on. Not really caring where it gets because it'll be covered up where it's where it's not supposed to be. That'll get covered up anyway. Okay, sweet. Now I'm gonna take a baby wipe. Just clean that up really quick. I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. But while that's drying, I'm going to add some protection. I just took a piece of um, wax paper and put masking tape on there and I'm just going to attach it to the underneath the other page underneath there just to protect that from any sprays because I'm probably going to use my ink sprays. I'm going to do that on both sides. And putting the masking tape there really helps it um, stay put. All right, let me let me heat this uh, heat set this really quick. Okay, now we're going to go in with our stencils, our brick stencil, and I'm going to use some uh, flexible modeling paste. So um, that way, if we work on another page and we're bending it around, it's not going to crack or break. And it's from Liquitex, but 
there's a lot of brands out there. This just happens to be the one that I have. So I'm going to, I've already got some out here on my, my palette, my under paint, my under paint, my under paper. Um, so I'm just going to randomly place some bricks here and there um, to give the illusion of like an old um, brick house. Just, just the paint's crumbling off the brick or something of that. Oh, you know what? Before I do that even, since there's holes right here, I'm going to place a piece of masking tape behind it on the page behind it so that it doesn't seep through to the next whatever I happen to be using doesn't seep through. I'm going to do that to both pages. It's just a little extra precaution. Okay, now let's get on to the brick. And you just want it to be real random. You don't want it to be perfect. So you just get some on your palette knife and you just scrape it. All right, I'm gonna lay a baby wipe over top of this little pile here of modeling paste because I'm gonna dry this. Oh, I'm also gonna wipe this this up. Okay. All right, that's not really fully, fully, fully dry, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be for this next step. I'm gonna take some masking tape and I'm gonna block off just this little window area part so when I spray, I don't get it on there. I'm gonna use my ink sprays and I think I'm gonna try to go for like a light blue-ish color. So I'm gonna use blue and I'm gonna use some white and of course I've gotta use my brown to make it vintagey looking. And so I'm gonna stick some paper towels under underneath just to catch any seepage. or overspray. I don't want it to go too crazy. All right, so now I'm just gonna start spraying. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach these little clips just to keep the weight so that all of the liquid doesn't go into one spot. Okay, I'll add some white. These are just the India inks um, that I mix with water. All right, I'm gonna use a more powerful um, heat gun to start moving this around a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna add some more layers. Got the first layer done and dry. Lift it up here for you. It's so pretty. All right, I'm gonna add some brown. This is uh, brown India ink. And I might even add a little bit of more blue here and there. And dry this up, move it around. All right, see how cool that's going to look? At least I think it's going to look cool. So, okay, let's move on. All right, I'm pretty sure that's mostly dry. Okay, now I'm going to take this masking tape off here. All right, now I want to put some texture stuff in, in these window spots. So... I am going to, first I'm going to tape it up, tape it off. Probably could just rearrange that tape and make sure it's a 
I'm going to tape up the outside part of the windows. So I'm going to use this damask from Prima looking thing and I'm going to move this and uncover my pile of modeling paste over here and then I'm going to try to center it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be. But this will just give the impression of like what I think it was gives the impression of like a um, like old wallpaper because I want this to look like real old and vintagey vintagey <laughs> I'm not even sure if that's a word there's a place my husband and I go where it's just real old-fashioned laid back it's really really a neat place you just roam the streets and and just have a good time. They have all kinds of um, um, old oh well <laughs> old storefronts and stuff. Not old storefronts, like old stores where they have where they sell antiques and I don't know. It's just a really cool place. They also have a lot of wineries there, so we go from like. We go hang out at a winery and sit outside and drink some wine and just really soak in the atmosphere. It's just so slow paced. It's just wonderful. We like it. We like it a lot. And we stay at a bed and breakfast. We buy some really cool old stuff, antique stuff there. All right. I need to clean up my stencil real quick and my palette knife and I'll be right back. It's not totally dry yet, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and make another, I'm going to go ahead and spray the inside part here. I think I'm going to use a green and a yellow, maybe a blue and white. I want a really soft green color. Um, so let's just play and see what happens. A bit of brown to it. Grunge it up just a bit. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. The color turned out really good. All right, so I'm gonna do that one over here too. All right, there's where we're at so far. I kind of had a little bit of seepage right there, but. I'm not going to worry about it. Probably won't be as noticeable as one thinks. Um, so here's what we're at so far. If you put the window back. So it's going to look really, really cool. Well, I think so anyway. We're going to work on these die cut pieces now. These old book page die cut pieces. And we're also going to work on, um, I want to put some plastic underneath them so it looks like old glass so oops, sorry. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is before I mess, mess with those I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually cut this out but in order to make it look old I'm just gonna take some of that white uh, India ink spray that I have and I'm just gonna mist it that might be too big of a, a blob And we'll dry it. So what it'll look like, it'll look like old window panes. Oops, sorry about the glare. Can you see that a little bit? So I'm going to do the front and back because I'm going to need two of them. 
Let me cut that part off so I don't accidentally not spray the right part. I'm going to let that dry over here while I work on the die cut pieces. So all I'm going to do for these is I'm going to get my gesso out and I'm just going to use my finger and I'm just going to kind of just swipe over them like this. So it's not a full coverage and it's not a wash really, it's just kind of a... Um, I don't know, it's supposed to, I'm thinking it'll give it that old window, painted window look. And maybe at the end I'll add some more to it. But for right now I just wanted to hit and miss. So I'm going to do that to all of these pieces. And then I'm going to age it up a little with um, some archival ink and a coffee. And I'm really just wanting to get the edges. I don't really want to go over top. I'm going to, I'm not going to do anything with these, I'm going to leave these as is, but I am going to put some color on the window flower boxes and the top pediment thing. So I think I'm going to use pink and purple. And I think what I'm going to do is just spray it over here on my, my, my paper and just, just give it a hint of color. And just leave it like that, just to be real soft and subtle. And then I'm going to do the top part, matching pink. And leave it like that. And then purple. I couldn't have a project without using my purple. Oops, I got it a little bit on my... And I'm going to let those dry. And then I'm going to go back to my piece of paper here. And basically, I'm going to just, let's see, let's do it like this. I'm just going to trim both sides out at the same time. All right, so now all we have to do is attach them. Attach them to the windows like this. Let me grab some glue. I'm going to use matte multi-medium Rangers matte multi-medium that I put in this bottle. I'm going to run even some on the window pane part. And then I'm going to try to put the, uh, yep, I'm going to put the side that got sprayed to where it's going to be showing on the outside. Oh, see, that's going to be so cool looking. All right, I'm going to do the other one. All right, now I think we're going to go ahead and attach them into the, the page. And I'm going to use the same stuff. I'm going to use the matte medium. And this one goes there. Oops. I'm not going to worry about the panes. Um, well, looks like I'm almost out. 
I'm not going to run the glue on the cross bar thingies there. There's really no need. You know, you could also uh, leave the side open or the top open to slide in a, a photo. That'd be kind of cool. Just going to sit here and hold this for a second. Kind of looks like I might have gotten a little too much white on my window panes. I wonder if I can wipe. I sure can. Look at there. That even looks better. Just wiping a little bit. weight on there to help it stick while I work on the other one. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Alright, and then these pieces. Oh, I broke that off. Oh well, they don't have to have that little pointy part. These are going to get glued here, but I think I'm going to raise them up. Yeah, I think I'm going to I wonder what they would look like if I brought them down. No, I think I'm going to put them on pop dots. Both the flower pots and the, the um, pediment part. Let me get some on there. I've got some Stamp It Up Dimensionals right here. Now I'm going to do the other window the exact same way, except I'm not going to bore you with that painful um, <laughs> trying to peel off all those little sticky backs. So I'm going to probably turn the camera off and I'll be right back. Holy cow, that was a little painful, but I did it. <laughs> I even cut off the extra bit that was on the side hanging over there. Um, I think so far it's looking really, really good. I'm liking it. All right. So the next step, or the next thing I want to do is I want to add, I'm thinking about adding one of these thingies. Let me see what it looks like. It's a Prima Shabby Chic um, resin. Again, no name, but it's just these really cool ornate corner pieces and I wanted to kind of see what it might look like if I stuck a piece here in the corner maybe because the reason I wanted to do that is or maybe I'll do it in the other corner I don't know I want to use one of these signs from <laughs> Prima and these are antique street signs. See, why can't this say what it is? This is an antique street sign, and all I need is, I'm gonna use memory lane or hair, let's see. I'm gonna use memory lane and the pole. Yeah. Come on, Prima, make your packages easier to get in and out of. Okay, so that's all I need, those two. What I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to have this over here, around there, and I thought this might be cute. Maybe I'll have to do it down here. No, because then the heart's upside down. Let me think about that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I decided against it. I don't think I'm going to do that. All right, so... I am going to have this street sign here that says Memory Lane, but it's obviously too long. So, I'm going to take my Tim Holtz scissors. Now, I'm not going to cut through this piece of uh, metal here. I'm just going to I'm just going to take my scissors and kind of mark it a little bit. Just go back and forth. And then I'm going to see if I can just snap it. Watch your eyes. And if it didn't work, I'll mark it again. Come on. 
may take several tries. Oh, look, it's bent. <laughs> it's bent. <laughs> ah! Like I'm gonna shoot the camera out or something. Okay, there we go. Snapped it. Got it. All right, so that's gonna go there, and I'm gonna take a. Um, if I find it, I'm gonna take a little nail file maybe and knock those sharp edges off. But I bet I can't find it. Okay. Well, not gonna do that. Um, what I want to do now is take some gesso and I'm just gonna use my finger again and I'm just gonna kind of knock some of that black off of there. Come on, roll over. Not all of it, but a lot of it. I'm gonna do the same thing to the sign. All right, they're dry now, and I'm going to take some of that brown that I used in the background. And I'm going to spray that pole with it, and it'll give it like an aged look. Okay. Ooh, hot metal. Wipe that up a little bit. All right, now I'm going to glue that down where I want it. Can't get it too close to that crease. I don't want it to um, block it from closing. Now right, we're gonna put it right there. I'm gonna do the pole first. I think I'm just gonna use my matte medium again. If I've got enough. Oh, sorry. It's so quiet in the house. Every little noise they hear, they think somebody's here. All right, I'm gonna place this down. Whoa, look at me, a little shaky. And believe it or not, it should hold pretty good. Pretty good. I believe it's good and dry or dry enough. The next thing I want to do is take some gesso and highlight some of the bricks before we um, before I go on and do any other like shading. I'm gonna add some flowers and some fun stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some and put it out on my, my paper here. And I think all I'm gonna do is just Run it across the edges, maybe. I'm going to try to get some of these bricks. Just kind of hit the high points. Am I even in? No. <laughs> Make the bricks stand out just a little bit more. I'm going to go in with the ink tense blocks <laughs> and use a color that's super similar to the the brick and the wall. All right, I'll just put some water in there so that I can just go directly from here to the, I'm thinking that's the color, yeah. So I'm just going to go, all I'm going to do is add, let me make sure you can see. I'm just going to go along the sides, the outer edges. Of everything to kind of give it that shadowy look. I'm trying to make sure I'm in a shot here. Yep. 
You don't want it to be a perfect line either. You want it to be kind of jagged because it is on a, you know, a brick wall. It's supposed to look like it's on a brick wall. All right, now I'm going to go in between some of these bricks and make them stand out just a little bit more. Just kind of want to come up on the bottom of them. And just let the water and the brush do all the work for you. I just noticed something. My heat gun, I don't know if you can tell, burned a hole in my window, melted it, which stinks. So I think I'm going to try to trim it out and make it look like the window's open maybe. Um, so I'm going to see if I can do that and I'll be back. Well, I managed to get most of it out. Now it looks like the window's just open. See, there's no mistakes. There's just, you know, opportunity to make something cooler. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. I don't need these anymore. And I'm gonna take the masking tape off the back side of these. Go ahead and put the whole reinforcers or reinforcements. <laughs> I still haven't looked to see what they're really called. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on there. Oops. And they should fit 100% perfectly on there. Alright, now I'm going to add some flowers. I have these itty bitty teeny tiny, you can't really see them in these little jars, but they're little bitty tiny little flowers. So I think I'm just going to start, I don't know if I'm going to use this one, it might not show up. We'll see. So I'm just going to dump some out and I'm just going to start placing them um, on. See, they're really tiny. Some of them are glittery. Look at my hands. Woo. And some of them are plain. I don't know what that is in the center there. It's like a tiny little bead or something. Um, but yeah, I thought these would be cool. cool. I thought these would be cool <laughs> coming out of the little flower boxes. Uh, I'll go ahead and dump some of these out just in case. Just in case. All right, I'm gonna glue them down with, I think I'm gonna use glue and seal, Ranger glue and seal. Um, and I think, you know, I'm just gonna start adding some glue. Just gonna put globs of, of glue down, globs. <laughs> and just start placing flowers and see, see what happens. Known that my fingers are going to get all in the way. There we go. It looks like it's climbing up the the window there. All right, let's do the same on this other side, but maybe not so many. We'll just do like a cluster. All right, I think that's it. I think um, it's all dry, and I think it turned out beautifully. And you gotta let me know what you think. Um, let me see if I can get in a little closer. Whoa. <laughs> 
Let me know what you think. Um, Sophie seems to like it. She's saying hey. Yeah, it looks pretty good, even with the missing window. <laughs> so, if you like this um, video, give me a thumbs up um, and let me know what you think. Uh, be sure to subscribe and head over to my Etsy shop and check out this uh, new tag-shaped art journal. Um, it's available. There'll be a link below um, in the description. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye!